There's a washing machine in the background, so you'll have to excuse the noise. I've been working forever on this, and I'm trying to make a mock-up, so I've got a block in the bottom just as a spacer. Then I've got a black dustbin, which is pretty dusty, but it doesn't really matter. It's, it's a tapering shape, so it'll be easy to withdraw, hopefully, if I cast some kind of homemade refractory something. I'm going to use perlite and fire clay, fire cement, to fill this. And now I just need to get a, an inlet tube down here. So this is kind of like the Myford Boy one, and this needs to be near the bottom, so that's about here. I'm kind of just going to eyeball it. I had drawn a circle on there, but I think it's in the wrong place, so I'm going to move it down a bit. And just kind of go in so that I intersect, and there'll be... I'll do it loose so that there can be enough space to move it whatever way I want. Hopefully it'll make sense. So there it is with the opaque hole drilled and that's the little bit that came out at an angle. And then I want to get this silicone bottle to come in at that angle there. So that the flame swirls around the bottom up and up as it goes. So I'm just going to keep chewing away bits as I go. It's quite a strong angle inside. So that's it there. I might drop the thing in the center down a little bit, just so that it, because um, that's just hitting the bottom of it there. But I can do that. I might do it in two layers. Put a layer in the bottom of, like, fire clay mix, and uh, another layer above, packing the sides. And I'll just tape this on somehow. I guess. Maybe I don't need maybe I don't even need to. It just needs to make a space for it. And then the idea is that my little burner can go in there. Now I'll need to put a new nose on it, but it can go in. You don't actually need the flare on the end anyways. Or I can use my big burner. And with it without the nose it'll just go straight in. It's a bit long, but uh that's what it is. Pretty big actually. There we go. So this is a kind of aerated porcelain fire brick, insulating fire brick. And I think 26 means it goes up to 2600 Fahrenheit, but I'm not sure about that. Uh, I could just cut this up and, you know, use other ones to make a lining for this, but instead I'm going to do this perlite mixture thing. So, so over here I've got a bag of perlite. It's just like really lightweight. It's it's bizarre stuff. I don't I don't know what it is really, but it's just amazingly light. I'm not sure if it's good for the health or not. It's kind of like cat litter, but lighter. And then I've got this heatproof mortar. This isn't the right stuff by any means, but it's the stuff I have. I've got half a bucket of it left over from when I made my Rumford fireplace in the house. It's years old, but I'd rather use it and use it up than anything else. The other thing I've got is these uh, bits of fire brick from a gas fire that I salvaged. So I'm going to crush them up as an aggregate as well uh, to put in the bottom just because I have them and I might as well. The heat shouldn't be as good in the bottom or as hot so I'm going to fill it up to just below this line with uh, something now. And the other piece to fill up is the lid and I've just got a flower pot as a former there for the vent in the lid. I think the best thing is just to crush the bricks up in the the vessel itself using a bit of steel maybe piece of one inch bar it crushes down pretty small so let's get this fire brick in here as well oh maybe i should do this outside it's kind of dusty
kind of happy with that. It's kind of chunky, but as long as I put the chunks at the bottom, it'll be okay. Yeah, I think this is called grog, broken up fire bricks, but it's not really fire bricks. They're insulating bricks. Maybe a bit more. pretty hard on the arms so I'll just keep mixing it in so I've been mixing it in water and it down and I'm just gonna place some of these pieces that are big in the bottom and then put another layer of the stuff on top and then tamp that down this is just to waste away these pieces really more than anything to hide them sure if it should be a bit lower in the center for my pot to sit in. And then I'm going to mix up some of this perlite and mortar for the top. Just like making Rice Krispie buns, really, I guess. So a little bit of water and a bit more aggregate. It can go into the sides of the other bit. Right, so I'm going to have to mix up a bit more. So I mixed up a bit more. Hopefully, it's the right consistency. in here I just want to watch here. Yeah. Father? Yeah? I don't that need a flower pot. 
can make the shape in the inside. a bit weak you can see that probably not as well compacted um, not sure what to do there really because uh, I'm gonna leave that former in for now because it's a bit wet above it I'm guessing you see that's where the wall is thicker and I didn't compact it as well which is just the way it is I'm quite happy with that you know there's a bit of void in there but it's just uh, it's just an insulating firebrick so it doesn't really matter it's pretty good I guess Tidy up now. So it's the next day and they're still quite wet. If you can see I'm just disrupting the surface there. I shouldn't really do that. So they haven't like it doesn't it doesn't set like cement. I don't know if it's it's not hydraulic the way normal concrete cement is. It's probably easy enough to see here. So you can see the the ring there. That's where the bottom of the dustbin was. You can see this step here. So what I've done is I've gotten soft drinks can, an aluminium can, and I've just rubbed it around the inside to push to compress the loose perlite mix. Because I thought some of it, like it still looks quite loose there, but it's it's holding up okay. I think if I was doing it again, I would have mixed it up differently. I think really in the bottom what I should have done was use the back of that fire brick, the big fire brick, cut it out so that it fit in the bottom. And then just packed underneath it rather than pulverizing it. That would have saved a bit of fire clay, but I think I was sailing a bit close to it with um with the fire clay as it was. So I'm not sure how long this one will last. But uh it looks it looks okay. I'm gonna leave it about a week, I guess, to dry out. I could put it in by the fire, maybe, and somewhere warm. It's out in the shed at the moment, and it's damp outside because it's been raining. So it might make sense to put it somewhere. Let's see, actually, if I could take this out, this flower pot. So I'm reaching in underneath. I should have done this probably a bit sooner. to push it up I want to twist it out because it's quite sticky there we go because it's a flower pot it already has a draft angle so that's it that's out that's good that'll help it to dry you can see where there isn't great compaction at the top there but that's the bit I guess that'll well I hope will be least affected I'm about using a drinks can that's really all I mean Strange. I don't know if you can see that, but it's kind of swelled up in the oven. And it's only been in an oven that's cooling down. So I can press that in with my finger. It's not set up yet, or gone hard. It's going to take a while to dry out, I'd say. This is the range. You can see the oven's quite hot. So uh, the top of it's quite hot as well. I wouldn't leave my hand over there. That'll boil water, no problem. But I've got these up and that paint seems pretty robust because it's been on here now for a few days. This one's warm to the touch on this side, but you know, pretty much cold on that side. And it 
I think that's okay because I've still left that tube in until it sets a bit harder. It's still quite moist on this one. This is its first time up high on top of the stove. It's been sitting in front of it for a while. This one's been up uh, two or three nights now. And what's weird is this was flush, but now it's got a kind of a bulge on top. It's like it's fatted up or not fatted up, but fattened or expanded is the word I'm looking for in all directions, which is strange, but uh, this is what it is. You can see some moisture or something coming out at the bottom of it there. Hopefully it'll dry soon. It's taken forever. It's been, this is day four. It's been curing or going off for about a week now, two weeks maybe. And it's got this interesting kind of salt emerging all around. Really weird, some kind of crystal growing there. But it's been on top of a stove for a while. Pull out this, uh, pull out that tube. It's done its job. So I'm gonna give it a first firing with this little burner. This is the TKOR, the king of random burner. So it should come in something like that. And just throw the heat around and what I'll do is I'll try and heat up a graphite crucible in it just to, just to see what happens. Just to see, just to, you're, you're meant to kind of heat them up first. I've already heated them in the oven in the house to drive off any moisture and let it cool down overnight. But uh, let's see if I can anchor this somehow and get it attached to the gas. It's only barely open on the needle valve. Out, but it pulls that down. So, it's getting hot, you can see it's gone a bit blue there. It's getting hot there, because the flame was in there and inside, whereas the flame should just shoot out the end of the, uh, the end of the pipe. So I'm wondering if it needs the cowl here, because there's too much air getting in there, because I had a cowl on it before, so I'll try that.
away for a while and see what happens. It's maybe about 10 minutes in now and I haven't adjusted it at all. There's smoke or steam coming off around the edge. It's difficult to see the camera. You can see the orange glow in there. And I think that uh, this side or the far side, the side away from me now of the crucible is starting to get a bit, a bit red looking. Base there at 43. You can see the red spot. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. It's in the center of the screen. So I go further up onto the site number 10 there. It's 123. If we look at this 11.8 over here. It's uh, the number on the tank. 137, right up at the top. 180. So it's almost getting up for 200 there, near the 250, right at the tip there just too high inside of the chimney. If we look into the crucible, it's saying 270, but I don't know if that's right or not. That crucible is definitely getting a red colour on it. It's kind of neat. Wow, okay, that's, that's really cool. I guess this might work. I'll just leave it for a while and see, see what happens. there for about, well I left the brick on for 10 or 15 minutes and now I'm just turning down the gas gently. You can see there it's pretty good contrast on the camera. Pretty good contrast alright, look at that. It's, it's, it's difficult to see. I wonder what it'll be like when I, I don't want to turn it off just like flat so I'll just experiment with the pressures on the cylinder and whatnot. See if it makes any difference. set this to 12 and I've got it turned right down and it's been doing this for a few minutes and it's already cooling off you can see the difference in color I think but it's still it's still red inside you know in the crucible there but it is it is cooling off so the pressure is down to five I've left it open but it uh, is cooling off so it looks like pressure seems to be the best way to regulate heat but that's cool it's good to know just burn it down now, pull it off. I've turned it off now and I've pulled the burner out, but the heat's still, you know, it's been five minutes, but it's still red hot, or, well, cooling off inside. It's very hot. <laughs> so it's all cooled down, and you can see kind of the difference there between what was not fired and then what was, and I think those um, perlite granules kind of melt under the heat. You can see them there on the sidewall inside they've all kind of glazed down but that looks okay 
it's it feels smooth you can see it's blistered a bit there but it looks like it's worked just fine see that yellowy tinge and all of the um all of that kind of uh, salt growth or whatever it was crystal growth that came on has melted in I think it's still quite a bit it's not hot but there's you can feel the heat still in it uh, the angular air intake or jet intake um, or tweer is it maybe that's what it's meant to be called that worked worked just fine and so let's have a look at the crucibles there's one this is the one that was fired and this is the one that was the colour it started at. So there's some kind of a something here on the side, I don't know what that is. But that's that was glowing, so it might be a bit of metal or something included on the side and this was the chipped piece here. You can see the inside of it there. That had chipped off when in the post, I guess. I just left it in there to see what would happen. That's still warm to the touch but it's... It looks cool, like that must have, one side must have been the um, flame side and one side not. I don't know which side is which. And then it's still got a bit of the kind of graphite colour on the bottom. So now I have to make up a set of tongs for these to grip them to get them in and out. And I have to make up a set of pouring tongs to be able to pour the juice out. I kind of thought... Normally if something goes wrong on eBay, I will return the item, but this I thought that would be a good pouring spout. So that's worked well. And then the torch, initially I didn't have the little piece of Guinness can on the bottom, but once I put it on it worked just fine. You can see it's a half, one and a half inch to three quarter inch reducer with uh, an elbow with a fitting that takes a, I've just unscrewed that, takes a TIG, a TIG welding nozzle. And this will be, I've made a video about making this, so that'll be wherever it is. But that just, it worked just fine. This is the King of Random TKOR torch. And it has extremely mixed reviews on any of the, um, I don't know what you'd call them, forums for this kind of thing. People say, I can't get this to work and blah, blah, blah. And you can see, like, it works just fine for me, but they, they rubbish this design completely they really rubbish it so I've seen some really fancy designs in books and stuff but uh, here's the other design I have so this is it doesn't even have a nozzle so this one's welded and it's got a two inch pipe but you see the nozzle is just that pinhole in there and that's a maybe 0.8 mil but don't quote me to that that's uh, it's welded up I put a cap on that end and the and jet the gas goes in there I've tested this one as well and it does work like it shoots a flame out the end so I think this one would work as well but it's it's just massive compared to the little one and the little one works and uh, you don't need the flare on the end it has this one and a half inch one and a quarter inch flare you only need that if you're using it as a as a torch but if you're just using it with the forge the forge is the nozzle and the other thing I did then was I put the porcelain brick not porcelain but the aerated porcelain brick on top insulating fire brick on top to to choke the exhaust gas once it was getting warm and took it off at the end and it seemed that uh, with the with the gauge here with the gauge on the regulator I was running it by pressure so I started off at around 12 and then opened it up to 20 I think you can go even higher but I didn't want to overheat the thing in case it all, in, in case there was any moisture in it that burned and exploded and damaged it. But it seemed that there wasn't, and I, it, it, you know, it did the job just nicely. I have no idea what temperature it was. I have a thermocouple, uh, pyrometer thermocouple, in here, so I could use this, but um, I don't want to wreck it either. <laughs> They're not really expensive. It's not a very long one. It's got those ceramic things. You can use it to dip down into it, but what happens is you end up just melting the tip and you have to rebraze the tip or something like that. But uh, I got that for a pottery kiln that never, never happened. So this is quite a long video then, and we wound up with a forge. Uh, the torch will be in another video. 
or is already perhaps. Any questions or comments, leave them below. Any ideas for what I should make? Especially, because uh, I like making things, but I have no ambition to make anything with this for some reason. No plans, I just wanted to make a forge and I've done that, so now I need to find some things to cast up. I've got loads of aluminium scrap ready to go, and brass, potentially. So that's why I got two crucibles, one for Al and one for brass initially, and then maybe I'd really love to do cast iron. I've got a bit of cast iron scrap as well. So, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. See you later.